This is an RNZ podcast. Kia ora, good evening. We are officially 100 days out from the election, so what are the big issues for voters? One News was out across the country to find out what matters most to them and how they think election 2023 is going to shake down. Here's senior political reporter Benedict Collins. That was how TVNZ's One News at Six kicked off last Thursday night, after which Benedict Collins went to places around the North Island to ask people, who our political reporters routinely refer to as voters, what would determine their vote. And like many of his peers, Benedict seemed convinced that one of those things would be the personalities of the two major party leaders. The Waikato public weighing in on the Chris's, both Luxon. Yeah, not persuaded about Luxton yet, but um, the other one's proving himself as he goes. And Hipkins. He's had a few issues inside his um, department. I think he needs to iron a few of those issues out. What do you think of Christopher Luxon? Average. The man himself, though, full of beans. Uh, we are now 100 days away from the election, and i got to tell you, we are fired up and ready to go. But Benedict Collins and TVNZ are not alone in having this intense focus on Chris Hipkins and Christopher Luxon. For weeks, the New Zealand Herald, for example, has been giving out a Chris of the Week award to the one that they think has outshone the other, though they seem to have dropped the accompanying cartoon lately of the pair wearing superhero outfits. And the major political polls always ask people, who's your preferred Prime Minister, even though we don't actually vote for a Prime Minister, and these days more than a third of people don't or can't actually answer that question. And seeing as the performance and profile of our party leaders seems to be such a major for our media, as Hayden Donnell now reports, they're certainly still making a big deal of the way the National Party leader is cutting through or not. We are encouraging him to try and um, do some more photo opportunities. We had that um, boxing um, scenario a few weeks ago and people need to get to know him. That's TVNZ political editor Jessica Much Mackay delivering some frank political advice for National Party leader Christopher Luxon during a panel discussion on RNZ's Morning Report late last year. The idea that voters haven't got to know Luxon has become a kind of received wisdom in the press gallery and political circles. This is newsroom political editor Joe Moyer citing some on-the-street evidence for the theory on the site's weekly podcast Raw Politics back in April. Certainly I do my best to talk to people in the regions, um, have done a bit of that lately and you know these are people who are a little bit tuned into politics but not you know madly like we are and they still say they don't know who Chris Luxon is and what he stands for. That sentiment hit the headlines again this week after Luxon was confronted on his his lack of cut through with the public by cafe owner Michelle Cam during a carefully choreographed walkabout in Tawa. Here she is recounting the conversation to News Talk ZB's Nick Mills later that day. I just feel like I never see him out. Like it, it always seems to be Labour that you see on TV and you see um, doing stuff in, in the media. But I feel like you need to get to know him more. Like we need to know what he's about. Well, he was a good guy, and he said he is travelling all around um, up north and stuff, talking to businesses and people. So, yeah, I just I just feel like he's quite quiet. Luxon's own MPs say the same thing. On Mill's show, National's deputy leader Nicola Willis told him people just need to see the 24-7 Luxon she does. People don't really know him. Nicola, how embarrassing is this now? It's, I mean, he, we must know him by now. Michelle uh, was really passionate. She shared with us how hard it's become for her to manage her business. And I think all she wants is for more people to support National. Uh, and having met Chris, she was just really clear, more people need to get to know you. Uh, and I think she's right. The more people get to know Chris, the more people hear National's plans the more support we will get in this election. So um, I didn't find it at all embarrassing. It was a really positive um, engagement. In March, National's health spokesman Shane Retty blamed a poor preferred Prime Minister result for Luxon on voters not sharing his up-close, all-hours experience of the party leader. This is what he had to say to RNZ. I see the man that you don't see. I see the man after hours and get to have those conversations. And I think if New Zealanders can see that, they'll be as impressed as I am. There are still many parts, many facets of Chris Luxon to be revealed to the public. And I'm impressed. And I stand behind him. 
The people don't know you line is so regular that Luxon appears to have developed a stock response to it. This is what he told One News at Six back after that same poll in March. People you know, know what I've done. They still don't know exactly who I am. And here he is again talking to presenter Rebecca Wright a month later on News Hub Nation. You've been National Party leader now for a year and yet somehow people still don't feel like they really know you. That is what I hear. Yeah, Why look, is that? I, well, I think it's, um, it's an interesting one because I think people know what I've done but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily know who I am. All this begs the question, what actual evidence is there that people don't know Luxon? The answer is some, but not all that much. There's those aforementioned comments from the street, and last year News Hub compiled a word cloud of its poll respondents' takes on the major party leaders. Don't know and unknown were Luxon's two top results, followed by good and average. But that was eight months ago. Luxon has now been in his job for more than 18 months. He's been ubiquitous in the media, fronting Morning Report and Breakfast with Mike Hosking every week and turning up for a host of regular TV news slots. He posts often on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and must be at least considering signing up to Threads. All this is to say, it seems implausible that people haven't picked up anything about him. As the song goes, If you don't know me by now, you will never, never, never know me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Or, as the New Zealand Herald's Michael Nielsen put it to Luxon on the streets of Tower. We've been hearing that for months. So, what's been going on? Oh, look, I think it's happening. I mean, we're out and about and doing these regional back on track tours. We've had some fantastic sessions, and it's a great opportunity for people to get to know me. And uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to have a bit more time rather than just the, the three to six second soundbite uh, on the news each night. Perhaps this narrative is so persistent because Luxon literally can't be perceived or known. Maybe he's made of some kind of dark matter which can't be observed directly but only inferred from the physical objects moving around him. But it seems more likely that Nationals leader has revealed slivers of his true self over the last year and a half. As such, it could be time to take what he's presented to us at face value and stop reading the tea leaves on voters' minds and mining for more revelations about his real innermost character. After all, in the end, it isn't most important whether we, to use Luxon's words, know him or just what he's done in the past. As leader of the opposition heading into a very winnable election, our paramount concern is what he plans to do in the future. Hayden Donnell there looking at the leader of the National Party's media dilemma as the media mark 100 days to an election in which they seem to think the party leader's personal popularity will play a pretty big part.